Hey guys, we have some shifting vibes underway this week as we have planets leaving Gemini, entering the sign of Cancer. We are moving into some strong water sign energy that's coming through this week. So this is a great week to sort of cleanse, purify, surrender, release, let go. We are in a week that is more characteristic of the being side of things than the doing side of things. And I'll also tell you um, our efforts this week are likely to not really turn into or translate into much. So if you can and this is a good week to take a break, take a vacation, take a day off, go on a retreat, sort of just withdraw from the world somehow. It is also giving like walking daydream vibes a little bit, feeling maybe in a fantasy land, really questioning the state of reality in one capacity or another. We've got a very strong dominant sun Neptune square that is playing out all week and um a lot of water energy that is incoming right now. I will tell you, especially to start our week this week, there are, you know, we are heavy on sort of like the soft and fuzzy vibes, Mercury and Venus in a conjunction at zero degrees of Cancer being tried by the moon and Scorpio, really in our feelings, caretaking, a desire to care for others, give nurturing love, compassion, emphasis on the home, emphasis on the family. That's sort of what we're looking at to start our week this week. But as I said, you know, as we move through the week, there is just this definite maybe <laughs> break from reality that is somehow coming through so all that being said you guys let's get into our report of the day let's look at everything we've got going on as we move through our week this week and what perhaps we can expect as we get this week started Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Monday, June 17th, 2024. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the day where we are narrating the shift of the ages. If you guys stick with me till the end of the report, I have done a collective tarot reading for us today as well. I like to tap the energy field for more than one modality when I'm doing these energy overviews just to get a more holistic perspective on what's going on out there in our energy field. So we're going to do that at the end. There could be some messages in there for you. Let's start with the astrology. First off, you guys, this sun Neptune square, it's building all week. It will be exact on Thursday. Neptune as a planet and an energy that on one hand is very spiritually connected. It really can have us feeling merged almost with a higher power. But on the other hand, it has a tendency to um, break things down and to cause like us to want to perhaps like escape from things, avoid things. Neptune is the ruler of the sea. This energy washes away. This energy erodes. This energy like dissipates. And when we're dealing with a strong Neptunian influence, a lot of times, especially in the context of the sun, which is the life force energy, what makes us feel vital and charged up and alive, right? It can have a tendency of just really like diminishing, lowering, breaking down energy levels. Also, Neptune has to do, since it's like the highest of the highs, right? The, um, the, the merging with all that is, the return to the spiritual realms. Like it can create these very lofty like ideals and visions that we strive for, but that we can receive a sense of discouragement from when we realize how they sort of match up to what our actual reality is and like our lived experiences and like what we've been able to like accomplish and achieve. So right off the bat, you know, when we're dealing with a week that is dominated by this Neptune square sun energy, um, you may just feel a bit down on yourself. You may feel a little bit discouraged. You may feel like you'll never reach the like goals that you've set for yourself or what you strive to become. And even the actual position of Neptune right now at literally the last degree of the Zodiac, Neptune rules the sign of Pisces. This is a really, really powerful Neptunian influence we've got going on. The Sabian symbol of that degree, the last degree of the Zodiac, 30 Pisces, is also all about the ideals of greatness that we set, ourselves, set for ourselves to attain and the process of becoming that. The Sabian symbol is a majestic rock formation resembling a face is idealized by a boy who takes it as his ideal of greatness and as he grows up begins to look like it. 
So even the symbolism associated with the degree placement of Neptune right now could be really calling forth like the vision of perhaps some ideals that we seek to <laughs> strive and manifest or become. And, you know, maybe the discrepancy between the actual reality that we're at now. Now, what is also kind of unique about this particular Sun-Neptune square that we have going on right now is that it's also going to be happening in an exact opposition with the black moon. The black moon is at 29 degrees of Virgo when the sun squares Neptune. And the black moon is our shadow side and our fears and our insecurities and our doubts. And in the sign of Virgo, it has to do with our fear, fear of failure, okay? Like what we can and can't har bring to harvest, like what we can and can't bring to fruition, like our capability and ability to produce essentially. So, you know, being consciously aware of the tendency of Neptune to present to us in a capacity like the loftiest ideals that we could seek to strive and become. And also, you know, reflecting off of our fears maybe of failure or not being able to achieve or to produce or to harvest or to become or to grow into full fruition. You can see how that could be. And then the sun, of course, squaring that Neptune energy. You could see how before we even bring, you know, the signs or anything into it, just the planetary alignment itself, it could be kind of um, bringing up some conflict regarding our ability to achieve our goals, essentially, you know, boil down kind of in a nutshell. So if you find yourself facing a sense of discouragement or just feeling like, um, you know, like vulnerable or weak or impotent or incapable somehow, realize that Neptune is also the illusion, okay? Okay black moon this is our fears right another thing that's happening and that this is also representing is the the fears that have always been illusions and that have never been real that may be like coming up in this context somehow as well so it's more so like the fears of failure and not being able to achieve our goals or attain our ideals that could be causing depression that could be causing us to feel like everything is sort of falling apart that could be causing literal like breakdowns somehow and we've got to remember the sun is in the sign of gemini okay um that has to do with the mind there could be literally like mental health issues that are really more significant right now as a result of that like people losing grip of reality people not being able to face the truth people not being able to process information people not knowing what is true and what is not and what is real and you know people really being very adherent perhaps to a fantasy or to a delusion very delusional energy cognitive dissonance there could be issues with like again like the fears and the anxieties that we don't even necessarily have a conscious grip on but that have a grip on us somehow and are pulling, pulling us down maybe into some type of like depression or void or something like that so a lot of people who are unaware of the way that this energy is operating right now and this is especially as we move through the midweek and you know as I said we really do start the week in some um more like nurturing warm and fuzzy type of vibes and feels as Venus and Mercury in a conjunction enter the sign of cancer the moon also trines it we'll get there in a minute but I just generally want to say like people could really be struggling with the state of things, okay, um, this week and really questioning a lot, really struggling with doubts. Also, um, crises of faith too could be represented here. So just something to keep in mind. And also sun neptune square this is going to lower physical energy levels the sun this is vitality this is the life force right and in a square to neptune neptune erodes neptune dissipates and dissolves and evaporates and breaks down um there's just you're just probably likely not to have as much like pep in your step you know get up and go this week and it is a good week to take an extra break to take an extra nap to take a rest if you can the more sleep you can get this week honestly like the more time that we can kind of spend surrendered to the dream world and the dream realms and like healing and releasing things in our unconscious mind even through like extra sleep and stuff I do think that that will be very healing to the physical body the physical system where we are pushing ourselves to excess this week when we feel like we don't have the energy and 
and like working against the process of surrender that is coming over us now. There could be illnesses that result as an outcome. Neptune breaks down our vitality. Pisces, this can be about, you know, illness and sickness and stuff like that as well. So don't push yourself too hard this week, you guys. It literally could result in some type of you know, just cold or not feeling very well. But if you give yourself time to rest and relax and get some extra sleep, maybe spend some extra time like in the literal dream world, it could do something actually to like support our growth somehow um, moving forward. So be careful how you play the energy this week. Um, If you're, this is another thing I was like thinking about when I was doing this report today kept coming into my head um the whole concept of sort of like the masculine and the feminine energy I was talking about it in one of my past videos recently um the energy this week is very 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 water oriented water energy oriented and I'll tell you guys in a minute you know sort of all the indications of that and all the transits that are featuring water energy um, prominent and strong this week. But water energy is a feminine energy. This is a very receptive energy. This is not an active energy. And with the Neptune square at 29 degrees, this is the end of something. Like this is a release point. This week has a lot to do with cleansing and releasing and purifying and letting things be washed away on some level. The being over the doing, like this is where we're going to be supported this week. If you think about, you know, the masculine and the feminine energy, the active component of the masculine energy and the receptive component of the feminine energy, like this is a week about cultivating that receptivity, about being in a state more so of surrender and receptivity than like active assertion. In fact, as I always say, things that we do try to do and the progress that we do try to make and the work and the effort that we put in when we've got strong Neptune harsh aspects going on or even you know really any Neptune aspect generally has a tendency of ending in some type of a disappointment because Neptune does not stabilize things. Neptune washes things away so it's sort of like trying to build a sandcastle or a castle or any type of structure at the in, in like where the tide is coming through, like all the work that you put in, like the tide just comes through and washes it all away. So this is definitely a week where if possible, you know, being instead of doing is where the progress will actually ultimately come from. So that's sort of my disclaimer, I guess, <laughs> to introduce the report, my summary of the week. We do also have a full moon in Capricorn that's happening this week. We've got kind of a lot of things going on this week, um, but it is going to be generally, you know, all of that being said, therefore a good week to withdraw. Okay, we're talking about moving into the Cancer energy also. This is the crab. This is, you know, going into the shell dynamic of the cancer vibes coming through that is probably um a beneficial way to maneuver through the energy this week as well retreating relaxing you know by the water with all of this water energy getting in and around water can be therapeutic and healing however the one sort of like catch with it is be careful with communication devices technology uh with the neptune square there could be damage like two communication things or like tech type of stuff from water because that can just happen. Also, there could just be damage by water generally or just issues with water like leaks or flooding or storms, heavy rain that is causing conflict or interference somehow. So that is another thing to, you know, maybe keep in mind. But, you know, it is we do want to channel and be around this water energy, but just maybe be a bit careful when it comes to things to do with technology and communication. Um, but, you know, really great for a period of withdrawal or meditation or reflection on things as well. It's a lot what I was talking about in my last video. There's also a very strong energy about reflection, personal reflection, both reflecting on things and things being reflected back to us. So there's that. And now I want to talk about the highlights that we do have going on energetically this week. There's kind of like five things that we're looking at. And then I will go back and talk more specifically about the energy that we do have coming in to start our week this week and um, the Venus Mercury conjunction at zero degrees which is one of these energetic highlights this week it's interesting because they're coming to their conjunction at zero degrees of cancer and at that point in time the moon will have also just entered Scorpio
Scorpio. So we will have a water trine going on with Mercury and Venus in the sign of Cancer, trine by the moon and Scorpio. So right off the bat, we're getting right into this very powerful water energy, this like wave of feeling energy coming through. We also, as I said, have an exact sun Neptune square that's going to be happening on Thursday all week. We're building into that energy. And then as we move towards the weekend, we're waning out of that energy. The summer solstice is going to be on Friday when the sun enters cancer. So we're going to be talking about that. We do also have the exact Neptune black moon opposition that has been building for a while. And we got to talk about that this week. And then finally on Saturday, we're going to have our full moon in Capricorn. The sun will have just entered the sign of cancer the previous day on Friday. And it's going to be a very, very early degree full moon in Cancer and Capricorn. We might actually, I honestly haven't looked into it. I haven't looked that far ahead yet, but we might be having with the moon happening this early in the sign of Cancer, we might actually be having two full moons in Cancer and Capricorn this time around. I should know this, but I've got a lot of things in my head, so I'm going to have to double check. Okay. Um, so all that being said, specifically now let's go back and talk about Monday, just so you guys like know what's coming up and what's coming at us this week. Um, Monday, this is this lovely energy. You may have felt it already, but people probably are going to be being sort of like a better version of themselves, especially this should bring some relief coming out of all of those Saturn squares that we had last week. It's really interesting, actually, when you think about kind of like the greater context of things, because we had these Saturn squares go on. Saturn's also in the sign of Pisces. And now we're having the Neptune squares go on from the sign of Pisces. Saturn and Neptune to me are basically like oppositional energies. Saturn's structures, Saturn is like control and limitation and authority. And it's the frameworks of things. Saturn is what builds. Neptune is what breaks down and breaks away and it's the it's the intangible where Saturn would be the tangible and it's the unconscious where Saturn would be like firmly set in stone in reality so these are two very like extremely different energies however they're both in the same sign right now um Saturn transiting through the sign of Pisces, to me, this Saturn Pisces transit has a lot to do with breakdowns and illusions of all different types, breakdowns in belief systems and structures, breakdowns in authority that has been playing a very dominant role in the frameworks of reality, breakdown of the reality, you know, itself on some level, I think we're going to see throughout the rest of Saturn's transit through Pisces. But also, you know, the black moon has been transiting through Virgo. This is also a breakdown in our fears and the limiting beliefs that resulted in the fears that controlled us in the past. This is a breakdown of the control matrix based on fears and projections and narratives and the way that those projections did control our mind via our perception of reality in the past um, on a greater level in the context of our narration of the shift of the ages and our transition from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, this is going to be something that has been historically gripping the mind of the collective of humanity for a couple of thousand years as well. So transformation and change and breakdown in the ways that we used to think about stuff, the ways that we used to look at stuff, what we used to believe and what we are coming to understand, see and you know, re like reframe our viewpoints and perspectives as now is going to be quite essential in terms of this overall transition that we're going through into the age of Aquarius and actually the rooting of the new Aquarian frequencies and viewpoints and perspectives and belief systems and ideas and frameworks <laughs> onto the planet. So um, microcosm, macrocosm, but it, it, we're probably going to be making some breakthroughs coming up here over the course of the next couple of months over the rest of the summer. And this could be a period of time where on one hand, we're really overcoming some fears, overcoming some limitations, overcoming some illusions that kept us maybe in a state of suspended animation or fear in the past, or we could be coming to understand uh, um, a, or coming to have a greater sense of what it is that is that we are afraid of or that we need to overcome or that is or has been controlling us on some level or we could just be feeling like caught in this place where it's really hard to tell what is real and what is not and um 
is it fantasy or is it totally illusion or am I crazy or did I have some type of major just like epiphany? You know what I mean? And I'm even having a very hard time explaining the way that this like mumbo jumbo is kind of like feeling <laughs> um, inside of me, which is how I do these energy reports. So yeah, um, it could just feel like some type of dream. You could just feel like out of it somehow, or you really could be feeling like the fabric of the old reality is sort of like dematerializing and you are coming face to face with some like, um, radically new, but also maybe very confusing sense of, what things are or are not going forward. So um, there's that. So we're just going to put that off to the side and get back into the energy of Monday because that feels a little bit um, easier to deal with. Okay, so we've got the Mercury-Venus conjunction going on. Mercury and Venus coming together. Of course, this is always going to promote charm and charisma. And this is just like very pleasant speech, very nice conversations, a real strong desire to connect and relate. People are probably going to be very social. But this is also likely to be more oriented around the home and the family. Um, I do feel like people are going to really gravitate to like spending time I'm with and um, be kind of just like more driven to be around loved ones and to participate in more like caretaking type activities maybe this week and over the next couple days people being more affectionate and the moon okay it's it's like a power up for this aspect uh, we've got the conjunction going on zero degrees of cancer. This is going to be very strong cancerian energy where we are verbally like needing to express our love and affection for people and stuff like that. And then with the Scorpio moon coming in and trining it as well, this is like a passionate emotional component that is also facilitating whatever pleasantness generally this mercury venus conjunction is bringing in the sign of cancer and it's also interesting because while the moon is transiting scorpio the moon will come into an opposition with mars which generally can bring like anger and frustration and inner irritation and like fights going on with the mother or with women generally or in the home and in the family but because Mars right now is currently in the sign of Taurus, which is ruled by Venus. It's who's in the conjunction to Mercury, who's in the trine with the moon. It really is like the Martian energy is just driving us almost to like love and care for and connect with like our loved ones and our family and stuff like that even more. Now, of course, it could still manifest is like irritation and tension going on within the home and family um, along those lines, but more so I just feel like it's likely to be wanting to like do things to care for other people, like wanting to use our energy to be helpful or to um, just like engage in some type of like nurturing or more like feminine dominant type of thing or maybe even just being more receptive to things being in a mood that like we where we're like surrendering more and driven to care for others the position of mars also at seven degrees of taurus on monday is um the sabian symbol seven taurus a woman of sumaria comes to draw water from jacob jacob's well so right there we have more water symbolism going on drawing water a woman being receptive taking in so it just kind of is coming through in multiple ways throughout the way that the chart is presenting on Monday and moving forward into the week we also have the position of the conjunction at zero degrees of the sign of cancer that Sabian symbol is on a ship sailors lower an old flag and raise a new one so that's also talking about of course like some type of change that is underway right now and with the square happening at the 29 degrees that is also talking about some type of change underway this is also mutable energy right and of course we're talking about Pisces energy which is the end the last sign of the zodiac in 29 degrees very last degree of the zodiac so I really do feel like this is like the tides turning in some type of a way like a change of guard energy going on um but more water 
references, right? On a boat. <laughs> so that is strong water dominant energy, the caretaker instinct probably emphasized within all of us somehow. And people generally should just be a bit sweeter all the way around I think in the energy of Monday. This is like a really really good week to reconnect with loved ones like family reunion vibes really strong coming through this week or like a family vacation would be a really good way to spend this time. Conversations interactions with others should really feel good with Venus and Mercury in a conjunction in the sign of Cancer be comforting and generally you know sweet pleasant, very nice, strong desire to connect and relate within our own little bubble or our own little world though. Like I said, Neptune in the sun and square, like this is a desire to escape reality. Like this brings on strong escapism tendencies, wanting to like avoid sort of like the real world type of stuff. And that's why it really is a good time to get away if you can. Um, but even if you can't with the cancer energy going on as well, I do feel like people are going to just be more inclined to be sort of like in their own little bubble in their own little world and we're going to be just a lot probably more tapped into the feeling nature of things over this next couple of weeks as this water sign cancer energy comes in could be an emotional week also again there could be some depression that comes up there could be some sense of discouragement there could be fears of failure that come up there could be um like sadness and stuff having to do with loss or what we're letting go of or what we know needs to come to the end right now what we know we need to release but it is water dominance going on this week I mean we've got Neptune and Pisces that is squaring the sun in Gemini right we've got a Scorpio moon this week that is trining Mercury and Venus as they enter the sign of Cancer and then we've got the sun entering the sign of Cancer later this week and we've got a full moon that's going on on the polarities of Cancer and Capricorn so and then the water symbolism that we have coming through as well to start this week just a very feeling oriented nature and it could be bringing up a lot of emotional energy in regards to various things but it is time for washing things away cleansing purifying and in terms of what it is that we're washing away, this is going to be limiting beliefs, as I was bringing up earlier. The fears that have never been real and that have always been the illusion, but that for whatever reason seemed more real than anything else that was in our experience. Ideas that have also distorted our perception of reality. This is also with the Gemini sun at 29 degrees, what we're letting go of and breaking down the breaking down right now too. remember this Gemini season has had a lot to do with going through a process of like growing up somehow maturing somehow expanding our minds somehow and there this could be a period of time that is also marking like the end of an era in terms of the way that our ideas have maybe colored our thoughts or perspectives or decision making as well relationships financial commitments and connections that are not a reflection of our growth or of the journey that we are embarking on now, these are also the things that are coming to an end right now with Mercury and Venus having also just squared Neptune and together in the sign of Cancer. Our new connections, what's coming in right now, like it has to nurture our soul and it has to support our process of growth that is underway right now to become more, to evolve, to grow, to progress, to become, to align with a higher version of ourselves, to activate some potential or like latent destiny within us that has always been waiting for us to arrive at this moment like we've arrived at the moment and now is the time where we have to like walk through the threshold like we have to let go of the things that we've been holding on to that have defined the past version of our reality and our past paradigm that we've been existing within but are not a reflection I keep coming back to this word reflection like the last video this video of where we are going going growing and going to be finding ourselves moving forward the things coming in now are going to support our process of growth. They're not going to be limiting our ability to become what universe is calling us towards right now going forward. This is a karmic cleansing and a karmic reckoning as well. And it's also interesting. Remember, this is the Pisces influence that we're talking about. This is the energy that represents the past 2000 years of our collective human experience and a little bit more. Okay. So it really is like 
a record of history on one hand that has dominated the conscious experience that is beginning to crumble and um, that is breaking down right now as well, while simultaneously a new paradigm of experience, reality, understanding, and connection with the universe itself is being birthed at this moment that will bridge us into the age of Aquarius and ultimately an ascension into a new golden age, which is the trajectory that we are headed on now going forward through the next several thousand years. So um, there's there's that. So the things that are breaking down and that we're letting go right now essentially are what chained us to the paradigm of the past. And it may not be, you know, obvious and apparent in the way that it's translating into our mundane like actual tangible experiences that sort of like that's what's driving this process or it may be very clear and evident that that's what's driving this process but it really is about like ultimately breaking karmic cycles and being released to anchor the new generations and legacies that will be defined by this Aquarian energy coming in um, going forward into the future like that's what this is really about we are letting go of like the age-old like psychic fears and stuff like that that have held us in a, a certain state for a period of time that has come to its conclusion so we are in a month of change and transition you guys and this water energy is all about cleansing washing away and letting things go you literally may feel like you're going through some type of alternate reality this week neptune does have a tendency of having that impact everything might just feel like a little bit fuzzy a little bit unclear you could feel like generally nothing is real right now questioning what is real questioning what is not but as I say, and I will continue to say, when we're dealing with Neptune, things have very little staying power. Uh, this is meant to be a less lucid and a more kind of like mystical experience of life this week. We are meant to embrace that feminine energy, that water energy, surrender the ego and like our physical assertion over the world a little bit this week, being more receptive to the subtle, invisible, spiritual influences that are at play just outside of our purview of tangible experience and reality there's a very thin line the veil is very thin I guess we should say between the the visible and the invisible worlds this week and it is a week to just kind of merge with things and be less assertive in terms of like you know what we're trying to establish don't force things. Don't push things to happen this week. Again, like I was saying earlier, it can literally make you sick with the Neptune Pisces influence. Instead, cancer, 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 you guys. Self-care, nurturing, rest, meditation, you know, good meal, good nap, like the things that cancer energy really, really likes. Um, states of being. There are states of being, right? There are states of doing, as I was talking about earlier, that compare or that align with the masculine and the feminine energy. Water is feminine, surrender, receptivity. This is a week for being. What is done in this energy will not sustain, but what is cleansed, released, and surrendered in this energy will actually support growth and progress. So actually, the way the energy is coming together this week, um, our progress comes through what we are releasing, what we're letting go of, what we're surrendering to, and our ability to just be and not like have to do. Okay. So that's what I have to say, you guys, about the astrology of the week. Should be, you know, it's probably going to be a bit of a weird week whenever we've got this strong Neptunian energy going on. There could just be strange kind of things that are happening or it could just feel very like mystical or very surreal kind of surreal is a very good word that describes the way that this energy is and we're talking about Gemini we're talking about Pisces the the a square to Neptune also especially when we're talking about a personal planet you know Mercury Venus the sun I talked about this in my last report this is not a straightforward energy there is not clarity here there is not honesty here there is not straightforwardness like this is not energy that is highly trustworthy or reliable take everything worth a grain of salt everything is sort of illusionary right now there is um 
you know, people have a tendency of be being very deceptive. Um, nobody's being their most forthright about things. Um, you know, Mercury and Venus there, like people are going to want to say what feels good to say and what feels good to hear. Like people are going to be like avoiding probably, um, you know, confrontation and stuff along those lines. I'm saying take a break if you can this week, go on a retreat, go disconnect from like reality or the matrix somehow pamper yourself that's going to be where you're going to find your most success I feel like as we move through the energy of the week this week so all that you guys now let's talk about the tarot cards uh we've got some interesting messages messages coming through as well the the tarot messages presenting today are also I feel like talking about feeling kind of in a state maybe of being a bit disempowered we have the emperor and the emperor in reverse actually and the two of pentacles coming up this is like questioning whether or not we can do it like do we have the strength do we have the power are we smart enough do we have the skills like we could maybe be doubting ourselves in some capacity this week or feeling perhaps a bit discouraged about what we've been working on the progress that we've been making our ability to manifest okay so uh, the emperor in reverse the two of pentacles like going back and forth can i do it can i not do it should i shouldn't i um but again emperor in reverse the emperor is about like getting things done right this is about not getting things done this is about maybe taking the week off not pushing it being maybe you know allowing ourselves to process or sort some things out without needing to assert ourselves or take some type of action Another group of cards that we had coming out today, the Six of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords, the Ten of Cups, and the Lovers. This could be bringing up fears, worries, concerns, nightmares, not being able to sleep at night, highly anxious, having to do with the balance of things, whether or not things are fair. This could have to do with material assets, resources, finances, partnerships, stuff like that, but ultimately interfering with perhaps our ability to have some type of emotional fulfillment or emotional satisfaction or to make our dreams come true. Ten of Cups, this is that Neptune energy. This is the ideal. This is the dream. And then we've got the lovers here. This is choices or decisions. Like, can I make the right choice and decision that will lead me down the path to my dreams? I don't know what to do. Is it fair? Is it balanced? Like, um, and being stressed out perhaps about things that are hanging in the balance somehow or about the give and take about things as well. The masculine, the feminine, receptive, active component of things. I don't know, but this is, it's some type of stress, it's some type of an anxiety about things hanging in the balance, choices or decisions, and whether or not they can lead us to this soul fulfillment that is what we are seeking to attain. On the back of the deck, also, we had the Knight of Swords in reverse and the Two of Wands in reverse. This is also like a halt to progress, our mind not working right, not much clarity, don't know what to do. I mean, the Knight of Swords, this is inspiration, this is motivation, this is a flash of insight this is like having an idea that launches us forward this is really you know being able to move forward with a clear mind somehow or a message coming through but when it's in reverse this is the breakdown in communication maybe or not knowing what to do or being a bit disoriented not knowing which direction to go and the two of wands this is about planning this is about looking at what we've got to work with and trying to figure out what we're going to do with it and with that in reverse as well again like we may just feel a bit disconnected from ourselves disconnected from reality disconnected from our potential and maybe even our purpose or the work that we're trying to get done things may feel like they're like slipping through our fingers you know sand through our finger water through our fingers or whatever so again um I think this is a good week not to try to make much happen in the world however to realize that there's a lot happening within us within the unconscious the subconscious mind the soul the dream world as well it's a really good week for dream work rest relaxation that will revitalize us in a way that will help us moving forward when we move out of this energy and you want to take it that way instead of pushing 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 yourself draining the heck out of your energy because that's what will happen if you push yourself too hard in this energy it will just absolutely drain you and there will be nothing to show for your efforts that you put in like that's just 
how it works. So if you want to get a good outcome out of this energy, you have to take the feminine energy approach of easing into it, you know, letting things happen, going with the flow, um, being able to like, kind of like take a time out to step back a little bit to just take some extra rest and to realize that through the process of rejuvenating yourself that way, it's actually going to promote your ability to do what needs to be done when this energy passes. So there's that. Let's get a synchronicity card now. God, spirit, universe. What is one final message we should keep in mind as we start this, start our week this week? What do we need to know? Oh, it says seek inner strength, which is like, it's all about what's going on within this week. And even, you know, so with the cancer energy, right? Where the sign of the crab was happening inside the shell. Okay. Give Give me this water that I thirst not, John 4, 15. So we're, we're going to be getting more into water symbolism, okay? You are thirsting for values in your life. You are not using the wisdom and guidance of your subconscious when you don't think right, feel right, and act right. The mass mind impinges on your mind and the result is confusion and failure all wisdom knowledge and power is within your mind you know the difference you know the values you need to uphold turn away from the mass mind and go within to what you know is right and that is this this little message right here i feel like is so 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 in alignment with what is going on right now energetically on a greater level like there is a lot of wisdom in this little synchronicity card that is very much in alignment with the greater energetic blueprint underway right now it always blows my mind these synchronicity cards um as I do these readings on this channel are often quite a mystical experience for me because it's amazing you know when we've got all of these cards like there's so many and for one to come out, and I don't get this one often. I maybe have drawn this card like one other time in the past three years that I've been doing these videos. And when they come out and they're just such a beautiful reflection of like everything I just got done talking about, it makes me happy. And I'm just like, yes, it is all real. Even if we can't see it, like the invisible world is a very prominent presence in our physical reality we just need to learn how to tap into it and see it properly so that's what i'm going to say you guys um and seek inner strength as we open our week this week message from the stars message from the cards i hope you guys liked it if you did like it please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel you guys share it with your friends if you think that they would be interested in this type of astrology content as well leave me comments i am so grateful for your presence here i really appreciate you guys feedback what you've got to say your experiences whatever's going on with you guys out there if you are having experiences that line up or reflect what i'm talking about in these videos please let me know in my comment section below that is valuable information to me if you want to know what's on this whiteboard i do have a facebook group where i post images of that so that's where you can find that come back with me on wednesday you guys we're going to be getting right back into it we um on wednesday what was it this happening on Thursday? Oh, we have the exact, that's the exact sun Neptune opposition on Thursday, summer solstice on Friday, full moon on Saturday. So we've got a loaded astrology week coming up, you guys, and I will be here to talk about it. You should be here too. You don't want to miss it. I will see you next time, guys. Have a lovely start to your week. And until then, bye.